I think that the conversation right around immigrants and their worthiness or their pathway to citizenship of papers based on, you know, whether they're able to contribute labor. Um, I understand that there are people indeed that want to come to the United States to work, mm -hmm. but there are hundreds of thousands of others that that is not necessarily why mm -hmm. they're coming. And I don't think that's also a good metric to base our policies on, like how much can they contribute. And a lot of them right now are waiting in Matamoros or Talking waiting in Ciudad the Juarez. Process. Yes, asylum as we know it in the United States, or as the president has said in the past decades, has completely been dismantled. I've been working with a group right now of lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, and trans people who are from Cuba and different countries in Central America. And they've been waiting there for months. And because of the so-called migrant protection protocols and remain in Mexico, they, you know, they cross, they were in CBP custody for a couple of days, and they were sent right back. So yeah. how would you change the asylum system as it is now? Well, immediately I would issue an executive order ending the migrant protection protocol or remain in Mexico policy. Uh, Donnie is right. I mean, there was just an Express News article yesterday, San Antonio Express News, the local newspaper here, chronicling uh, that uh, migrants who, are, in this case, were in Nuevo Laredo, have been subject to kidnappings, to uh, extortion, beatings. Uh, I, it's, not, it's very easy to believe, even more so if they're part of the LGBTQ community and they are not granted an exemption which is supposed to exist under the policy so that they can actually come back and stay in the United States. It's a, it's a disaster of a policy. It flies in the face of the way that the United States has honored asylum claims in the, in the past. And, and I would actually go back to how we used to do this, which was more effective. Was it more effective, though, because still people were waiting for years to see um, a judge in court? Uh, you know, there are many stories of people simply, you know, finding the system too cumbersome, um, you know, not being able to find the lawyer to represent them. I mean, it, it is an imperfect system. Well, it was more effective than what we have now, but it does have to be improved. And one of the ways that we can improve it is... You know, to improve our immigration court system so that they have the resources to actually go through these claims and that we change some of the policy that this administration has changed. For instance, if somebody has been the victim of uh, domestic violence or gang violence, that that does count mm -hmm. um, toward making an asylum claim. There are ways that we can improve it, but the first thing we got to do is end this Remain in Mexico policy that is subjecting people who are already desperate to beatings and extortion and to, you know, these drug cartels that are kidnapping them and then getting money from their relatives in Central America. Secretary Castro, um, I, I, I have to ask you this because the migrants themselves, they see the news and they see what's happening. And they saw that in July, Cory Booker visited El Paso and walked 10 of, 10 of them across the bridge. And they saw that. And when I see them every day, they ask me, who can come and help us? Can you come to Brownsville? Can you come to Matamoros and help them? No, thank you for the question. You know, I've had the opportunity now to go uh, to the Ursula Processing Center in McAllen to visit Homestead, uh, to visit Tornillo and one of the other facilities. You know, we've been trying during this campaign to lift up and to spotlight the experience of migrants, especially the children. And uh, so we'd be glad to see how we can be helpful in doing that, sure.